Hello there. Thank you so much for joining me to have fellowship with God. Kindly take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 8. Shall be reading verses 1 and 2. Our theme is no condemnation in Christ. Yes, no condemnation. To those who know Jesus as Savior, this is a message of assurance, assurance of salvation. To those who have not trusted as yet Jesus as Savior, this is a message of invitation, inviting you to trust Jesus Christ as personal Savior. For there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Verse 1 of our text gives us the big idea. The big idea, though, it's a conclusion Paul draws from argument previously made. So we shall trace that. In the verse 2 of our text, we have the proof or the evidence, if you like, supporting this big idea. Let's read our text together. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? God, we look up to you this hour. We come that you will speak to us, granting us understanding in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So what is a big idea? There is therefore now no condemnation. That is a big idea. No condemnation. The word for condemnation is katakrima. The Greek word means punishment. It speaks of pronouncing sentence on someone. So it is a verdict of guilt or guilty verdict, if you like, and the punishment thereof. So we can rephrase the verse 1 this way. There is therefore now no verdict of guilt and the subsequent punishment on those who are in Christ Jesus. You recall that I said this big idea is a conclusion drawn from argument previously made. How do we know that? Still in verse 1, look, there is therefore, yes, that is the word. It is a word that tips us off. Therefore tells us that what had just been said following the therefore goes back or has its root is linked to something previously said. So now let's find out what that was. Come with me to chapter 6. In chapter 6, in verse 14, Paul says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What is of interest to us is, for ye are not under the law. What does he mean by mean by not under the law? It simply means the law is not condemning you. Let's read seven verse six next. Said, but now we are delivered from the law. Let's stop here. The word delivered is released. 
so we can replace delivered with release and this is how it will sound but now we are released from the law now let's piece the two ideas together that is for uh, 6 verse 14 and 7 verse 6 together and we'll have something like this the law is not condemning you because you have been being released from the law so the condemn condemnatory power of the law is not affecting believers because they have been released from this condemnatory power of the law now in light of this paul can say categorically and boldly as such here at 881 that there is therefore now no condemnation no verdict of guilt and its consequence condemnation its punishment on those who are in Christ Jesus hallelujah everyone who has come to faith in Jesus Christ is assured of this it's been guaranteed this that there's not going to come a day not here in this life knowing in the world to come would God cast you out condemn you no because you have been released from the condemnatory power of the law. Hallelujah. Men and women, many have their eyes on heaven. Many want to go to heaven. Many want to have life with God, eternal life. But they are going about it the wrong way. The wrong way how? Because they want to go to heaven by merit, by their hard work, the obedience to the law. But James has this to say, James chapter 2 and a verse 10. This is what James says. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, and the word offend is fail, fail in one point, he's guilty of all. James says that it is not a matter of I got most of it correct. It is perfect obedience that is required, and none is able to do that, not in the past, nor in the present, nor in the future. No, nobody can perfectly obey the law and be saved our only hope and the assured hope that which will guarantee us eternal life heaven is faith in Jesus Christ and to such people Paul can say to them there is therefore no condemnation having made this known he now offers the proof Men and women, it is often the case that when two people are standing trial in the law court, the sitting judge, using the same law, may acquit one, in other words, set one free, and on the other hand, condemn the other to say, prison using the same law and we find that in verse 2 the same law but having two different effects look at verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life the spirit of life 
can also be rephrased as the life-giving spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is being referred to. The Holy Spirit. It says, for the law of the spirit of life had made me free. This is Paul's assertion. Supporting why there's no condemnation. The spirit of life or the life-giving spirit, the Holy Spirit, has made us free. Men and women. And how did that happen? Come with me to 2 Corinthians 5 and a verse 21. 2 Corinthians, please. Paul says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is about Jesus Christ. And the Bible is very categorical, that emphatic, that Jesus Christ did not sin. However, he was made sin for me and for you who have trusted Jesus as Savior. And his righteousness was given to me. This is what is called his active obedience. His passive obedience is his death on the cross. His active obedience is obeying the law of God. So let's read Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. This is what Matthew has to say. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. This fulfillment ministry of Christ includes his obedience to the law. The law that God gave in Exodus chapter 20. We failed to obey the law. Christ took our place. And in taking our place, he obeyed the law. He obeyed the law for me. And he obeyed the law for you. So the Bible says that he that knew no sin was made sin for me, for you. That we might be made a righteousness of God in him. His righteousness was given to me. So I stand before God. You stand before God. That is all who have come to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We stand before God because the law of the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit, that law has acquitted me, has acquitted you. That law, we stand before God and his law that on our own we had failed but because of Christ Jesus we are acquitted we are deemed to have obeyed the law so the law acquits me the law acquits you and that's what the Bible says for the law of the spirit of life hath made me free had made me free. And it says, had made me free from the law of sin and death. Previously, the law was this to you, was this to me. It was the law of sin and death. When in our own power, we were unable to obey the law, the law that God gave, in Exodus 20, was a means of death. It exposed sin. It made sin so glaring. It showed us what God hated, what constitutes sin before God, unrighteousness. 
and we were not able to desist from pursuing that kind of ungodly lifestyle that displeases God. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So the law of God showed me sin and my inability to stop from sinning, the consequence was death. So the law was for me, was for you, and for the people who are in the world, was the law of sin and death. But this law, for those who are in Christ Jesus, and that's where we come to next. This is what brings everything together. This is what makes the whole argument sin. Paul says in verse 1, Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. The condemnation is offered to those in Christ. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made us free. The freedom from the law of sin and death is in Christ. No condemnation is in Christ. That's why the invitation is to come to Christ. Because outside of Christ... There is condemnation. But in Christ, there is no condemnation. Men and women, everyone would like to go to heaven. And everyone can go if they can come to faith in Jesus Christ, where there is no condemnation. Where the spirit of life, the life-giving spirit, the Holy Spirit, is making people free from the law of sin and death. No condemnation in Christ. Would you accept God's offer of salvation? And for all of us who have come to faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there is no condemnation. Never, never would we be cast away. We forever remain the children of God here in this life and in the life to come. That God bless us all. Amen. Shall we pray? God, we thank you for your word. Blessed in our hearts, in Jesus' name.